at the time in 96, um, were you aware that the Southside Crips were providing security for Bad Boy when they would go out to California? Like, oh, yeah. Was that known uh, knowledge with you guys? Oh, yeah, we knew that. We still train on music awards. Um, and um, when was that, March? I mean, March of the 96 or something. We ran into that. It was an incident that they tried to put in where I pulled the gun on uh, Biggie, but it was actually uh, EPD from the South Side Crips that um, I knew that I pulled the gun on that took off and ran. And, uh, you know, I hid up under the car, got up under the car and hit. But mm-hmm. one thing I always gave Biggie credit for, and we always laughed and said, that's because he couldn't move, but I was saying, now that nigga had a little bit of gut. And he didn't move, <laughs> he just stood there. And, uh, yeah. you know, Shug was always, the bigger was too fat, he couldn't move, and he couldn't run, and he to wear. But, yeah, mm-hmm. we was more, we was really aware about him. Uh, so, at, at, that, at that Soul Train thing, the KPD pulled a gun on you guys? And uh, he pulled, and he had a gun. He, he never pointed it. That's why he's still here today. Okay, he, he just showed pointed that he it had up. one. He showed yeah. that he had one. And that's okay. when I kept telling him, hey, don't, don't raise that gun. Don't raise that gun. And then he, uh, he kept the point of and then he just took off and run. And that's when Pac okay. was running up, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Oh, that's what Pac was screaming? Yeah, he was like, Because yeah. afterwards, he was all he was all hyped up that he had uh, confronted, uh, that you guys confronted them and that they had ran. And that was the yeah. big rumor was whether or not they, they did run or not. Yeah, they did run. I mean, the security ran. Well, like I said, everybody ran except on Biggie. I'll be mm-hmm. lying on Biggie if I said he ran. He did not yeah. run. Can you remember what the, what I mean? I'm sure it was just shit talking back and forth. But can you remember what they were saying to Biggie before everything got uh, crazy? Well, what had happened was um, uh, what had happened was they were the, the, the whole thing was to, to keep us out and not mm-hmm. let our people in, and right. until the end. Uh, because what happened was that, the, the big thing back then was opening the show. Don Cornelius decided to let Biggie open the show, even though at the time, uh, uh, Tupac had the, the best, uh, song out, the album. So he, he made a deal with us. He said, y'all come to the war show and we'll make y'all happy. What he meant by making us happy is he gave Tupac, which I don't even think was a better album. Well, I don't know, but, well, you know, over, over Biggie's album, he let Biggie perform. But I don't know if people remember, but All Eyes on Me, not All Eyes on Me, uh, Me Against the World, one album of the year. Mm. So that was the trade-off. Mm, okay. But that's what... And so you guys were Tupac, waiting in Tupac, the back, uh, right? Yeah, we went. We went, and Tupac went to go up stage. That's when they announced that he just walked around the auditorium, and everybody was hollering, mm-hmm. West Coast, West Coast, Tupac, Tupac. And they, they put it up on the screen like he didn't attend the war show. When mm-hmm. we were there, yeah, they just yeah, but you know, Tupac wouldn't go upstage and accept the war because he was mm-hmm. mad. He was mad that um uh, that that uh that you know that they allowed Biggie to perform and not Pac to perform mm-hmm. uh, the show. Okay, okay, so take me to the confrontation. Um, the story is that you guys waited in the back parking lot because they were going to sneak out the back. And that you guys waited to catch a glimpse of them, or, or, or something of that matter, and then you were going through the fence to go to the back, into the back of the of the auditorium or wherever it was being held. And as you were walking back there, um, well, you know, you showed Pac, you guys, uh, Biggie and them just so happened to be coming out. Is that part accurate? What's accurate about all of this is, yeah, most of that is accurate. But what happened is. <laughs> This is what the plan was. Sure, they bought about a hundred tickets uh, mm-hmm. to the war show. But as death row people who always are, we were late. Mm-hmm. The pictures were, you had a whole bunch of guys walking around in some P-Funk sweatshirts. And they all was going to rush the stage and pull Buck Puffy and Biggie down off that stage. Mm-hmm. What, what was going to happen? But I had a boy that was the LAPD cop by the name of Keith Davis that I knew that ran the uh, 
security at the uh, Shrine Auditorium. Mm-hmm. I gave him his up. He allow he didn't allow any people with those P-Funk shirts inside of the auditorium. That was through the front doors. The only reason we came through the back door was because we only had parking. You only have so much parking. So that was just, I think we had two parking passes. So that was my, me and Frank was in one car, and then Tupac and all of them was in the Hummer. Tupac and a bunch of our laws and shit was in the Hummer. So those were the ones that went through the back. And that's when we was actually pulling up, getting out. Biggie and them was getting out of there. They just went in and performed, you know, because they were the opening act. And once right. they performed, they were coming out. We were just being late. And, and um, you know, which I'm glad, you know, we all probably be in jail still now if uh, yeah. if, if, if all those guys would have got up on the stage because I'm sure somebody would have got stumped to do. Mm-hmm. So, um, okay, so, so you guys are coming, you guys are arriving. They're coming out of the back. Um, at what point do you, do you think that, um, this thing could escalate into something bigger than, than it, than it did? Thankfully it didn't, like you said, but you know, with those two coming face to face, were, what, what was your mindset as, as I guess you're walking up with well, them towards the back? Yeah, who- of the camp? Yeah, who would know? Who would thought that you, you would have came close to you know face to face like that? Uh, mm-hmm. You you would thought most likely that you they would have sat in a green room or somewhere, or or you know still on the stage, or right. would have sat in sat in the audience. Who knew mm-hmm. they were going to you know leave? So um, when you came you know face to face, you know you're surprised. Of course, you know Tupac, he started yelling and going crazy, and. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, it wasn't enough of, you know, it was, they had pretty amount of security back there. They had a nation of Islam security back there who really stood in the way and got in the middle of everything. That really right. stopped a lot of the, you know, diffused a lot of the situation. And then, um, you know, the, the, the house security and the, uh, you know, the, the, the security for Don Cornelius, he, he had a bunch of security back there that, kind of diffused the situation, did a good job of diffusing the situation. Right. Do you remember, by any chance, if uh, you remember seeing Orlando Anderson as part of the security during that Soul Train thing for Bad Boy? I wouldn't have recognized him at that point. Uh, okay. The only one I knew at that time was Keithy. Okay. Well, Baby Lane was, was a youngster at that time, so I, I wouldn't have recognized him. I, I'm sure he wasn't one of the ones there, but I'm sure he was there as well. <laughs> 